children too long have been burdened. They are longing for heaven's green shore. When heartaches are left far behind us and burdens are carried no more. Good evening. It's good to see you all here tonight. It's good to be in God's house. And uh, let's go to the word in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this beautiful day you give us. We thank you, Lord. What a blessing it was this morning to see a soul that was saved and go into the baptism of water and following Jesus' example. Lord, what a thrill it is and the joy. I know the angels in heaven were singing, Lord. And praising the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we do thank you for each and every one that's here tonight. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless him. We pray for him, Brother Yancey, you see, he stands before us. And with Lord, we pray for ones in internal broadcast. We listen. We pray for the ones in Facebook that watch, and we ask you to bless them. And Lord, as we go to our prayer list, we pray for Brianna Baldridge's upcoming surgery. We pray for me and Sergey on August the 6th. We pray for Chris and Sheila Barker, Jenna Barrett, Irene Bell, Brenda Bryant, Earl and Barbara Clarkson, Dixie Clinton, Clinton, Jamie Cole, E.T. Deborah Connor, Jean Connor, Jack and Gail Dell, Donna Dalton, Linda Gale, Dorman, Joe and Joy Sherman, Mallory and Emma Hamlet. Faith Ann Holly, April Henderson, Eugene Henderson, Murray Hyatt, recovering from a fall, Janice Hodges, Dr. Wednesday, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Jennifer Hilton, Marion Johnson, Pastor Terry Lawson, Footgrass, Eston Lewis, Jerry Lewis, Shelby Martin, Angela Marvin, Christy McBride back, Gary McClellan, John Mitchell, heart operation this week, Linda Mitchell, Angela Moore, Toby Moore, Linda Moorefield, Keith Moorefield, Marjorie Morris, Nancy Newton, Angela Oaks, Donna Owen, Sharon Podbinski, Donna Raines, Danny and Debbie Ray, Robin Vicky Reed, James Richardson, Harry and Cheryl Hospice, Judy Snow, Alan Taylor and Clark, uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, Eileen Tickle, Danny Warwickham, Evelyn Wellington, Cancer, Nathan Wells, cancer, Jimmy Williams, stroke, Connie Wiles, Brandy Yancey, back surgery upcoming, Harold Yancey, Josh Yancey, thank the Lord for the rain, victims of the shooting in Butler, Stan and Shannon Morfield, unspoken, 
Elizabeth Edwards Strip, family of Albert Fowler, Kenny Owens, mother and stroke, Charles Wells, and pray for Diane Mills, sick at home. Lord, we ask you to just lay thy healing hand up on each and every one that we mentioned here today. And don't hope that we just pray and give you praise for each prayer that you answer, Lord, what it thrill it is to be able to talk to you and you just listen. But Lord, we have to listen too when we talk. We have to listen to what you have to say. And Father, we ask you again, just bless each and every heart that's here tonight. One's lost, don't know, you're your personal Savior. We ask you to, that this will be the day of their salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, this time we're all going to join in on a, a song. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Turn all the way over to page 23. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of There is Power in the Blood, page 23. 51 <laughs> We changed it Living below In this soul sinful world Hardly a comfort can afford Striving along To face temptation so where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend. Thank you. you. may be seated. At this time, you have your bulletins. Go ahead and get those out once again. We've got a few announcements and upcoming events we have here at the church. We see that uh, Wednesday, July 31st, we'll be having uh, Samuel uh, Freed being with us, the Hope of Israel. That'll be July 31st at 7 p.m. Also on September the 1st, we'll be having Evangelist Don Anderson. He'll be preaching with us on Sunday, both in the 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock service. And also, uh, men's prayer, we'll be having a men's prayer meeting on Monday, August the 5th. Brother Manny Graham will be the special speaker. Uh, get here about 6, and I think everything will start about 6.30. So just come on with good food and fellowship, bring your own food, and have a good time men praying together. There will be a prayer meeting on the new land on August the 20th at 6 p.m. Brother Tony Woodson will be the special speaker this, this month. 
All right, next month, uh, First Peter Bible study will resume this Tuesday. It'll be on July 23rd at 11 a.m. And please be praying about joining Believers Bible Institute uh, this fall. There'll be a new semester starting up on August 23rd. If you'd like to sign up, please see Pastor. He'll be, uh, be glad to answer any questions you have about it. And I promise it'll be a blessing if you are deciding to, uh, to join. Also, we'll be having a Man of God conference coming up on September 28th. Uh, it'll be at 12 to 4 p.m. we we'll have a bunch of great men of God coming to speak. Uh, be sure to invite all your friends to that. It'll be a blessing, I promise you. Also, another blessing will be Sunday, September the 8th. In concert, we'll be having Brother Smokey Wilson. He'll be with us in the Sunday school hour and also the morning worship hour at 11 o'clock. There will be a ladies' prayer meeting and covered dish provided by on Monday, August the 12th, 6.30 p.m., and they will be starting a new series on next Sunday uh, in the Ladies' Sunday School class. And if you're missing Sunday school, you're missing a blessing. I can promise you that. Amen? And also, if you look on the back, we see that Hands of Glory will be performing on August 11th. Never Too Far Gone will be at 6 p.m., so please be sure to invite all your friends to that. And at this time, we're going to have our uh, ushers make their way up to receive our Sunday evening offering. And as they're making their way up to receive that, let's remember that our white envelopes in front of us are for our tithes. That's 10% belongs to God. And offering, because we've been too good to us. Amen? And our brown envelopes are for our building fund. We can't wait to get on that new land, and it's going to take time, talent, and treasure. So we're just going to have to give from our heart, and God can bless it. I can promise you that. Amen. And if you don't have cash or check in-house, Brother Ken Vipperman's in the back. He has a debit card, credit card machine if you'd like to give uh, your tithes and offering that way as well. And also, uh, everybody listening on internal bro eternal broadcasting and Facebook Live, it's a blessing to have you as well. And if you'd like to give, there's one of two ways you can give as well. You can go to www.strengththenumber42day.com, click on the secure link at the top, or you can give by way of mail. You can send a P.O. by 1004, Danbury, Virginia, 24543. And at this time, if I can have brother, brother, my brother, Evan Lewis, come on up and bless the offering tonight. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Give us, Lord, thank you for many blessings. Uh, th thank you for allowing all of us to be here, Lord. Be with the ones that couldn't make it tonight. Bring them back to the next appointed time. Uh, thank you for the uh, soul that was saved this morning, Lord. Uh, be, thank you for the uh, baptism, people stepping out on faith and showing uh, who you are, Lord. Uh, be with tonight's service, Lord, as the pastor gives a message. I'll let him step on our toes as needed. Bless this offering to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for giving back to the Lord. Let's give our instrumentalists a hand. Amen. <laughs> Thankful for their faithfulness. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Hosea chapter 5, verse 3. And as Evan's coming to perform to you guys uh, this evening, as he's getting to a spot, uh, this song right here he's going to perform is uh, one of my favorite songs that Hands of Glory performs. And it's, it's a message that is needed for everyone. You know, sometimes we get in a rut, you know, and we just seem to go with the flow at times, you know. But there's a saying that even dead fish go with the, with the flow. And faith without works is dead. So I want to have a live faith. How about you? Amen? Amen. So I think we, tonight we need to, it needs to be our prayer and our mindset that we need to tell our hearts to beat again. Like you've never been before The life you knew In a thousand pieces on the floor And words fall short in 
times like these But this world drives you to your knees You think you're never gonna get back To the you they used to be Tell your heart to beat again Close your eyes and breathe it in Let the shadows fall away Step into the light of grace Yesterday is a closing door You don't live there anymore Say goodbye to where you've been And tell your heart to beat again Just let that word wash over you It's all right now Love's healing hands have pulled you through So get back up, take step one Leave the darkness, feel the sun Cause your story's far from over And your journey's just begun Tell your Take your Bibles and turn with me to Hosea, chapter number 5. This morning, we've talked about because of idolatry. Last week, we talked about because of ignorance. And idolatry is putting anything between you and God. Thank you, sir. Anything between you and God. And I'm afraid the message was on the mark this morning. Because I'm going to tell you what the problem with the church is today. is people putting things before God. You are here to serve Him. He is not here to serve you. Let me say that again. You are here to worship Him. This is not about you. This is about you coming here. Letting him know you're here to adore him. We've got this thing turned around. And, you know, I like to say it's the doo-wop churches that do that. But it's not just the doo-wop churches anymore. Good fundamental Baptist churches are losing their grip. And it's becoming more about I need to be educated. I mean, I need to be, uh, I I need somebody to thrill me. I need someone to give me a, a good time. Church is not about coming and having a good time. And let me say this while I'm at it. It's not about you here coming and getting your ego scratched either. 
That's not what church is for. You don't come here to get your ego scratched. You don't come here to uh, have a good time. That, that's not why we're here. You, you're not here for you. You're here for him. This is his time. This is God's time. 9.45 on Sunday morning, it's not time for you to lay in the bed and sit at home because you don't think you need Sunday school. No, it, it, it's God's time. 11 o'clock worship hour, it's God's time. It's not your time. It's not your time. Sunday night is God's time. Wednesday night is God's time. You say, well, preacher, I don't know where in the Bible you think you find that you have to come to church every time the doors open. Hebrews 10, 25. It's in there. Go read it. It's plain as English. Good King James English. If you put anything, including yourself, I meant to say that this morning, so I'll say it tonight. I believe some people worship themselves more than they worship God. It's all about them. No, I hate to bust your bubble. It's all about him. That's why Ephraim, the northern kingdom, was in trouble. They didn't have enough knowledge of the word of God to get them close to God. They wouldn't worship God. Instead, uh, they worshiped themselves or whatever it was they wanted. <clears throat> now, number three, tonight in verse three of chapter five. Because of immorality. I know Ephraim, that was the northern kingdom, and Israel, the southern kingdom, is not hid from me. Folks, we, we've got to come to the grips. God's not up, up there taking a nap while you're in church. Amen. God never takes a nap. He never gets tired. What we do is not hid from him. And you can't lie to yourself and say, well, I don't really matter. No, I, I want to make something clear tonight. You know, if it was only one person in the church getting out kilter, wouldn't be too bad. But I'm afraid there's, when you go from 1 to 15 or 20, the church is in trouble. Yeah. Do you understand me? If they get out of kilter and you've got 15 or 20 people who are not in line, how long do you think somebody on a baseball team or a football team or a basketball team would last out of kilter? First of all, they get to sit on the bench, and then they'll get fired. Everybody matters. That's my point. Everybody matters. And folks, God, he can see what's going on individually, corporately. He sees it all. Nothing's hid from his eyes. And it says, for now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. He said, the northern kingdom's messed up. The southern kingdom's messed up. Nobody loves me. Have you ever made God feel that way? You better think about it before you answer it. Did you know you're here to make God feel loved? You don't hear that much, do you? That's what worship is. Telling and showing God you love him. You're not the only one who needs love. God needs love. That's why he created man. He wanted someone to love him because they wanted to, not because they had to. We get home after church on Sunday. We try to shut the doors on the car real easy. Because that dog can hear anything. And me and Wendy have got no more than got in the house good. And she's at the door barking. Wanting in the house. You got to feed her something. And so she comes in. And she makes her presence known. She eats some cheese. And then she comes to my office and eats some bacon. And then she wanders from room to room. Wanting somebody to rub her all the time. I'm in the, me and Wendy were working on the mail today. I was writing the letters, and Wendy was folding them and stuffing them. We was getting the job done, and charm was highly perturbed because Wendy was not watching her and rubbing on her. She was licking and sticking. So she come in my office, and I'm over there writing and stuffing, writing and stuffing. And I finally looked at that dog. I said, I don't have time to love you. I'm working for God. She said, woo, 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 woo. didn't make a business to her. 
Not a bit of difference, sir. She wanted that attention, period. Well, I'm here to tell you God wants your attention. He wants your love. He wants your respect. He wants your obedience. He wants your diligence. That's how you show him you love him. Amen or oh me. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. In other words, they're not serving me. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they know, have, uh, have not known the Lord. In other words, they're not loving God. They're off loving somebody else. They're off loving somebody else instead of loving God. You say, well, God's God. God can do without my love. Who made you the boss? That fly over your head? That's not your call. That's God's call. He's telling you he needs your love, your obedience, your dedication, your service, your faithfulness. He needs it. He's a needy God. Then it says in verse 5, And the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim, what's that word? Say, preacher, are you trying to be tough on us tonight? I don't want you to fall. I don't want you to fall. I want you to stand tall. I want you to answer God's call. Amen? Amen. I want you to stand faithful on the wall. I want you to be there for him. He says, you'll fall in their iniquity. That is sin. That is something you love more than you love God. And when you spend more time with other things than you do with God, you've committed spiritual adultery. You've stepped out on God. Then Judah also shall fall with them. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. You know what breaks my heart about that that phrase right there? When they do want to go see him and find him, he's not going to be there. They weren't there for him when he needed them. He's not going to be there for them when they need him. That's serious business, is it not? That's serious business. But they shall not find him. He hath withdrawn himself from them. Now, J.B.'s sitting right here. I hate to pick on it, but he's close by. J.B. will tell you. A preacher can stand in that pulpit, and he can tell if his spirit of God has withdrawn itself. He can tell. Now, I'm here to tell you tonight, thank God I feel the Spirit of God here tonight. I really do. But there's times I've stood in that pulpit, and I'm going to tell you, I knew God wasn't here. I didn't know if I caused it. I don't know if somebody in the room caused it, but he withdrew himself. And you don't want to be where God's not. I want God to be here. I want God to meet in our midst and make a difference in our lives. I want God to to be the reason we get up in the morning, the reason we serve him every day. You see, because of immorality, deciding to love sin and serve sin more than the Savior is a serious business. It starts with idolatry, just having a love with something else. But then after you just have an infatuation, you fall in love with it and start committing sin. Now, he's got a picture here of the northern and the southern kingdoms. And that's a big area. Ephraim was the green area. Then Judah was the southern kingdom. And God said, Ephraim and Judah both have forsook me. What would make God say that? Judah and Ephraim forsook him. That's what made him say it. God forbid that ever ever be said about me and you. God forbid that that be said about you and I. But I'm afraid we're so selfish today. We, we're so far away from God, we, we just can't even fathom being close to him anymore. There's too many things between us and God. And that's what happened to these two kingdoms. Other things became more important than him. And the end result was they fell because he stepped back. He, stepped, he let them have what they wanted. 
Here's what I'm trying to say tonight. I've said it before and I'm going to say it clearly. God will not force you to love him. He wants your willingness, your willing love. The northern kingdom was in outright idolatry and had departed from the living God. I mean, they were out in the groves worshiping wood, literally. In God's eyes, the northern kingdom was defiled and an abomination. So let me make it clear to you. If it was wrong for them to go out in the woods and worship trees, it's wrong for you and I to worship pleasure. It's wrong for you and I to worship the cell phone. It's wrong for you and I to worship the television. And if, those th- if the trees and worshiping a piece of wood defiled and abom- made them abominable, what do you think that does to me and you if we put those things before God? Serious business. I, I don't want to pass through this life and not get something done because I was too selfish to let God do it through me. That's easy to happen to all of us, to me, to you, to all of us. Isaiah 59 too. But your what? Iniquities, your sins. You say, preacher, I don't have any. Uh, yes, you do. By your answer, you're loaded. You just don't know it. You're loaded, though. Your iniquities have separated between you and your who? Your God. You know, some of you may be here tonight, and I'll just be honest with you. I've been there more than once. And you come to church feeling sorry for yourself. Boy, you got the cake. You got the hat. You got the punch, and you having yourself a pity party. God just ain't been fair to you. Church just ain't been fair to you. Your family hadn't been fair to you. Your job hadn't been fair to you. And you got that pity party on. You better listen to your preacher. If you come to church like that, how in the world is God going to help you? Because you're feeling selfish. Selfish. Selfishness is the sin of the church today. Me first and God if I have time. Me first and God if I have time. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not what? If you want God to hear and answer your prayers and move in your life in a miraculous and a glorious way, you're going to have to stop being selfish. I'm going to have to stop being selfish. We're going to have to start listening to him instead of always wanting him to listen to us. A one-way conversation gets boring quick. You share what you need for God, then be still, know that he's God and listen to what he tells you. People think, oh, I'm just going to come to church and lay my birds on the altar and God's going to do what I say because I said it. Do what? Have you lost your head? God ain't got to do nothing just because you ask him. Who are you? What are you trying to say, preacher? Attitude means a whole lot when it comes to God. You can either be on this end over here having a pity party or you're on this end over here full of pride. Either way, you've just lost. You've just lost And you see, the devil doesn't want preachers to preach on this because if a preacher preaches on it and you get right with God, then you and God are going to get along and something's going to happen. Don't be melancholy. Country music is melancholy. If you weren't drunk before you started listening to it, you will be before it's over. (laughs) If you won't depressed before it started, you will be before it's over. I'm just telling you, it's the effect of what it is. It's melancholy. Drink it, don't kill me. Her memory will. Lord, God help you. You should have thought about that before you married her. Come on now. You should have thought about that before you married him. Some people are just melancholy. If some people ever had a good day, I'd die because I'd have a heart attack. Just melancholy. Always down in the mouth. That is a sign God's not near you. Pride feel when you think you're better than everybody else. Got that snout up in the air. That's a sign God ain't nowhere near where you are. But a humble, loving, happy-go-lucky Christian, they're where God is. That's where God's at. 
Not framing their doings simply means this. If you go back to the, the text we started with. Not framing their doings simply means they would not repent and turn from their sins. The spirit of sin and rebellion had overtaken the northern and the southern kingdom where the love for God should have been. What are you trying to say, preacher? It's not an easy thing to stay in love with God because we're in the nasty now and now. And we've got an enemy that's stronger than we are. And it takes a lot to be a strong man or woman of God. Are you listening to your preacher? Just flipping in, flipping out every now and then ain't going to do it. Praying and reading your Bible once or twice a week is not going to do it. You better be reading your Bible every day. You better be praying every day. You better be going to church every time the door is open. And you better be listening for the call of God at any minute. You say, well, that's not how I'm living. Then you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble in this world we're living in because you can't turn your head without sin being present, prevalent, or propagated. I'm sorry, it's just the world we live in. It is as putrid and satanical as it's ever been in history. 25, 30 years ago, well, let's go 40 because I forgot I'm getting old. 40 years ago, 40 years ago, you had to go out of your way to do something stupid. You had to go out of your way to do something stupid. I mean, you had to make an effort to go on the wrong side of town to do something you didn't have no business doing. Now they got marijuana trucks running all over Danville trying to sell marijuana. It comes to you. It's right there at you. You know, look, sin's in your living room, on your TV, on your computer, on your on your tablet. Come on, help me. It's there all the time. And say, look, we didn't have to deal with that 40 years ago. These poor teenagers back here, I, can't, I don't see how they survive. Because the world is on them so hard all the time. And folks, what I'm trying to say tonight is God wants your love. And he wants to love you. But he can't help you unless you love him. Listen to me. Israel, the northern and southern kingdom are no longer close to the Lord. They don't love or worship him anymore. They've fallen under the spell of pride, thinking more highly of themselves than they ought to think. That's the definition of pride. After, they, after the spell of pride and rebellion completes its wicked work, they're going to implode into a pit of sin and then drown in their own cesspool of selfishness. Please don't make me say that again. Whew. Oh, listen. They'll put on a facade of religion and they'll act like they care about God and then they'll falsely and phonily carry out religious acts just to try to put on a facade. God's tired of phony facades. He needs some real men and women to love him no matter what and to sell out to him no matter what. They won't mean these religious acts because they're just putting on a facade. And because they don't really mean it, God will not hear nor accept them. That's my worry as a pastor. I can preach to you all day long the truth of the word of God, and I try my best. But if you don't listen to it, and you don't let it affect your life, and you don't let it make a difference, God and I both are in trouble. God and I both are in trouble. It, it, it can come out the pulpit, and it can come out to the pews, but if you don't let it enter right here, and put a stop on this side over here. Let it stick in this brain and get down in your heart. You're in trouble. It takes an effort to pay attention. Get the words? Pay attention. It costs you something to focus. You have to make yourself focus. It's not easy. It's not easy. Because of the northern and southern kingdom's ignorance in the word of God. 
Ephraim had fallen for Satan's trick of idolatry, worshiping something else other than the God they should worship, which leads next to a lifestyle of immorality, which will sink your ship. And when you say the word immorality, of course, in our minds, we, get, we can start thinking about really bad sins. I want to tell you something. It can be just having a melancholy spirit. Always just wanting to cry and bellyache, feeling sorry for yourself. Or it could be a prideful attitude that you think you're better than everybody else. And God help you if you got both. And it's possible to be on both ends at one time. The devil will let you if you'll let him do it to you. Come on now. Amen or obey. I'm not preaching agronomy to you here. I'm right on the table with you. I'm right level with you. I'm trying to help you tonight. Look at Hosea chapter 6 verse 4. Those were the three reasons Ephraim was denounced. Now number two, Ephraim was desired. Please listen to me tonight. I'm not preaching this just to fill up a little time and then send you home. This is what I'm trying to help you understand. Who are you preaching to tonight? You? You? Everybody? That's who I'm preaching to. Hosea 6, 4. O Ephraim, O northern kingdom, what shall I do unto thee? What's it going to take to get your attention? What's it going to take to get you just to love me a little bit? As much as I love you. O oh, Judah, southern kingdom, what shall I do unto thee? Listen to this. For your goodness is as the morning cloud. And as the early dew, it goeth away. Do you know what God's saying? You've got so much potential. If you just love me more than you love yourself. He wasn't talking to the rest of the world. He was talking to his own people. Tonight, I'm not preaching to the people over the casino. I'm not preaching to the people at the nearest beer joint. I'm preaching to God's people. God said, what is it going to take to get you where I need you to be? And if in your mind you're saying, preach it, get them, preacher. I'm talking to you. You're the one I'm preaching to. Because it's all of us. It's not one or two. It's every one of us. It's no doubt that God loved Israel. God loved it. I don't know how. Because if I'd been God, I'd have zapped them and got rid of them. But I'm not God. He loved them despite all they did. He loved them, and he cared for them. He had plans. He had a hope, and he had dreams for their lives, but they wouldn't have none of it. Let me ask you a serious question tonight. Do you know what God has planned for you? If the answer is no, you're in big trouble, but there's still hope. You ought to know what God has got planned for you. I told you this morning, I wasted a year of my life. I knew what God wanted me to do, but I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I wanted to be Ray Kroc Jr. And after watching that movie the other night, I was stupid. I, I wanted to get me a store and I done calculated how many cases of a years of hamburgers I was going to have to sell to retire. I had it figured out. I said, all I got to do is get that first promotion. And boy, I'm on my way. I'll be a second assistant. I'll be a first assistant. Then I'll get me a store. And then I'll start raking the money in. And then I'll retire at 50 years old and float on the ocean and fly in the sky and do this, that, and the other. Twelve months, nobody got a promotion. Nobody. Before that, everybody's getting promoted every week. Twelve months. And then one day I understood, I heard there's a promotion opening up. And I'm, I mean, I just know I was up for it. I was the one. 
And he took Cindy Hermanson downstairs and promoted her instead of me. Oh, I was PO'd. Oh, I was, I was upset. I didn't care if the Egg McMuffins burnt. I didn't care if a French fry fry was on. I was hot. I've been getting up every morning at 4 o'clock to be at work at 5 o'clock to put my hands in God forsaken buttermilk and make biscuits and choke them things off and put them in the oven and bake them. And I've done that for a year every morning and he's going to promote her over me. When I used to pick her up and take her to work and have to wait on her to get out of the bed to go to work, I knew too much. Thirty minutes later, he said, I need to talk to you. I said, oh, Lord, you're going to fire me. <laughs> he done heard what I thought, and he done seen me burn him egg McNuffins and forget to turn the fire on. And Cindy Hermans is going to be running this place, and I'm going to get fired. Show us the world. The part of the story I didn't tell you is just a week before I had mailed in my application to go to the Bible Institute at Liberty. And he took me down and said, well, we just need to talk a minute. I need to, uh, I need to have two swing managers. I said, I'll take one of them. <laughs> he didn't even have to ask. So he went through and told me all this and this. You know, sometimes you just ought to shut up. Don't you say amen right there. You ain't said amen all night. Sometimes you just ought to shut up, but I couldn't do it. I said, let me ask you a question. Why did you promote Cindy before you did me? Now, one with five minutes difference, but I still hot. We, we think stupid. We don't always think normal. We think stupid. He said, because she couldn't run the back and you could until Joe come in and he could run it back and I could talk to you. I thought, oh, I feel so stupid. <laughs> I, that's the only reason he asked her first. It wasn't because I didn't deserve it. And I won't, I, it just didn't. Hey, sometimes we try to outthink God and we're just stupid. He's doing something. We got no idea what he's doing, but he's doing it for our best. Just love him. Put him first. He'll do the rest. He's got plans, hopes, and dreams. He was at the end of all he could do other than bring judgment upon them. And that's why I'm preaching this series of messages. I'm tired of seeing God judge his people because they're too hard-headed and stubborn to love him. He knew the potential that was in them, but they let it evaporate away like the morning dew. Don't lose your potential for God just because something goes wrong, just because things don't look good or you don't feel right. Let me help you. It's not about how you feel. It's not about what you think. Forsaking all, I'll trust him. What does that spell? Faith. We've got to start having enough faith and love in God not to let circumstances shoot us down and depress us and discourage us and destroy us. Look at the word goodness. I'm about to let you go. Hold your breath. That was a joke. <laughs> Hebrews, the Hebrew word, <laughs> kased, is goodness, kindness, respect towards God. Reproof, beauty, favor. Now, I want you all to know here tonight, and I'm not trying to get ooey-gooey on you, but there's not a one in here in this room that God didn't see your beauty. Now, when I look at Earl Connor, I, I have to question God. <laughs> to, when I look at Mike Mills, I have to question God. Where is the beauty in that? But God sees some beauty. He even sees some kindness. Amen? He even has some favor for every one of you in this room. Israel had the goodness of God in them, their mind and their heart. They knew God. They knew how to show him respect 
and adoration, but they didn't do it. They didn't do it. They knew reproof, or they knew right from wrong. But they didn't care because they didn't love him like they should. They had the beauty of the Lord in their mind and in their heart. They had the hand of God at their disposal. But instead of taking the hand of God and letting God empower them and lead them and direct them, they would rather have a cake, hat, and punch pity party. They'd rather be pride-filled and think they're better than everybody else and not doing that. They can do that. I'm too good to do that. I hear that one in church all the time. Psalm 79, 6. They wasted all the power and the presence of God. Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee. And upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. That's what David prayed. Folks, listen to me. You expect the lost world to be judged by God because they don't know him. They do the things they do and there's consequences for what they do. Am I right? But you don't expect it from people who know God. You don't expect people who know God just to do stupid things and be disobedient. Amen or oh man? You expect them to obey. And if you don't know what obey is, see Stan Moorfield, I made an acrostic thing for him. He'll give you one. He'll teach you what to obey, how to obey. I'm telling you. God expects us to obey him. All the time. All the time. The influence of the world has replaced the influence of God in our hearts. And I promise you, this is my last verse. Ezekiel 5.13. Thus shall mine anger be what? Accomplished. And I will cause my what? Fury to rest upon them. And I will be comforted and shall know that I am the Lord have spoken It in my zeal, and I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. I can't tell you. I'm only 60. Some of y'all are older than I know more than I do. But I can't tell you how many times I've walked by people who used to be faithful to God and love God with all their heart. And I've walked by them in the hospitals and the nursing homes and the funeral homes because they just decided they just didn't want to do what God wanted to do anymore. They were either having a pity party over here feeling sorry for themselves or they're over here with pride. They were better than everybody. Or they had a combination of both and that's lethal. Am I right? That's just lethal. If you've got pride and a pity party, you're in trouble. In the sight of all that passed thee by, I don't want any more casualties. I'm not trying to get political. I'm just trying to make a point here. Last Saturday, a man took his wife and daughter to a political rally and died before he left. He did nothing wrong. He just showed up for a political rally. And I want to tell you, that's been hard for me to swallow. I don't know about you. That's been hard for me to understand. But let me tell you one worse than that. Is when you pray for people and you visit people and you try to talk to people and you try to reach out to them and they're either having so bad a pity party or they're so pride-filled you can't get through to them. And their lives just fall apart. Physically, mentally, 
financially, family-wise. It all falls apart. And you try to help them. Am I right, JB? But because they want you to feel sorry for them, you're not going to get out of that hole if some, just because somebody feels sorry for you. Or they're over here and they're mad because they're so pride-filled. They're so mad about something that they can't get back. And they won't listen to you. I've dealt with it for 40 years. And you just watch their lives just melt away and become destroyed. It's, it's, it's sad. God had to watch Israel go into captivity. I wish I had time to not tell you what they did to people when they took them into captivity. I'm going to tell you something. It was wicked. The women were raped. The young boys were castrated and turned into eunuchs. Are you listening to me? Israel was taken captive by one of the, some of the most wicked people that ever lived, and they're still wicked today. It's Iran and Iraq. They're still doing crazy things today. And the people God loved got what? JB carried away. Because they were either one way or the other and wouldn't listen to God anymore. Where are you tonight? Don't lie yourself to feel sorry for yourself to the point that it destroys you. Don't be over here so pride filled. That it destroys you. We got to get back to one place. We need to get back to singing that song. Oh how I love Jesus. Because. He first. Loved me. Angie that's your invitation tonight. So look it up. <laughs> oh how I love Jesus. Because. He first loved me. Let me tell you the secret. We're going to pray and go home. When you truly with all your heart fall in love with Jesus, all this won't matter. All this won't matter. All that's going to matter is what's right here with him. I always wondered how Earl, people would say ugly things about him, talk about him, and he never let it get him down. I'd see the financial reports before he would. And I knew if the offering was bad or good before he did. And my office was right outside of his. I said, oh, Lord, when he sees that, I'm going to be gone. Go upset him. Never made a change. No matter what people said, no matter what happened, he was still happy. He was still joyful. He was still faithful. And I learned the secret of that years later. He just kept winning people to Jesus. Kept winning people to Jesus. Kept winning people to Jesus. Because he was in love with Jesus. He was in love with a God who could do anything but fail. When you believe your God can do anything but fail, you won't be over here in the mully grubs. When you believe God can do anything but fail, you won't be mad at people because they've done you wrong or they've hurt you. Because I'm here to tell you, people are going to let you down and hurt you. Yeah. I'm probably going to hurt your feelings, and JB's going to let you down. <laughs> okay? People are going to hurt your feelings and let you down. But Jesus never will. Just love him like he loves you. Stand with me. Father, I've preached as best I know how. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Tonight, God's people have heard the word of God. And I pray tonight, Lord, they'll just come to this altar and say, Lord, I want to love you more than I ever have before. Lord, be so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you more. God, I pray tonight your people will decide in their heart, determine in their soul. They're going to get out of the mully grubs. They're going to get out of pride and anger. They're going to get back to the middle and just love you. Because when we look into the face of the God of grace, oh Lord, you'll set the pace. And Father, we'll follow. No matter what goes wrong 
or what goes bad. We won't be hindered or halted or had. Oh, God, help us to just love you. And Lord, if we'll just love you, the mother grubs will go away. The anger will go away as the morning do and not our potential. Oh, God, help us see how important we are. Everybody's important to you, not just the preacher, not just the deacon, not just the trustee or the Sunday school teacher. Lord, everybody's important to you. And Lord, you love us all. Help us to love you. I pray in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. What's God spoke to you about? Come speak to him. Altars are open. Kneel, stand, sit. Let's do business with God. Let's have a revival tonight that the devil can't hit.